Hip Hop Weekly here, Laura Marcel. We got an exclusive with my girl. I know you've seen on Empire, she doing her thing. <laughs> Acting skills up to par and rapping skills better. Caught her at Revolt this past year. Yeah. Breezy, man, what's been going on? Nothing, just working, staying busy. Very busy. How is Austin, Texas treating you? I love it. I think, uh, well, not I, I don't even think I know. Like, my reactions have been so good. You know, the fans, the impressions that I'm leaving on the people are, have been so positive. So I'm just thankful. I never wanted to be that person that just seemed untouchable. You know what I mean? Like, in, in the most positive way. I mean that. Um, I just, I love the people. I love it. I, I love being around people. I've been like this girl since I was three years old. I've been the same person. So I just love it. And I have to ask you. How did you get the acting book? What made you want to go into acting and like incorporate that with the music? It honestly wasn't my wasn't my choice. That was God's decision. It wasn't mine. I, I had been I was a barber my whole life. Um, I had been pursuing music, of course, since I was in about middle school, you know. But I, I worked so hard to kind of perfect both of those things. The barbering, I feel like I excelled. Yeah, you know, <laughs> way up, way up in that. Um, the music, you know, I was just kind of getting to a phase where, you know, I'm comfortable and, and, and I know my sound and I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm comfortable with my stage presence, my my uh, my performance in the booth. Like I was I was good, you know, and just working towards that constantly. And, you know, one morning I got a call about Empire and I ended up on the audition the next morning. And, you know, life, you know, it went. A different way I'm, I'm thankful that I'm able to do what I love which is my music and the acting at the same time so that's cool you know it's decent that that those two can run parallel because that doesn't usually happen most people got to make a choice you know and people are asking me you know well what are you doing I'm like I'm doing both for as long as I can you know what I'm saying People sometimes stop you and they call you Bree the Gay Savage. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah. It, it makes me feel so good when they call me Breezy. <laughs> that means you know. You know they what I'm saying? You, are, you yeah. know. So those of y'all that know, I appreciate that. Yeah. That's the character, people. Yeah. Now it's all good, though. It all, it's all good because there's there's so many similarities between Frida Gats and myself. And the story that you guys watched on TV, about 95% of that was my real life. Wow. Coincidentally. So. That's crazy. It was, it, it's, it's, it's almost like the ultimate blessing because here I am on TV and people are thinking, it's a TV show, this is up. But when I got that script, every script I was getting, I was blown away every time. Because I'm like, damn, like, I did it. I did this. I, I did that. I've been through this. I've been through that. I had to deal with all this. So the emotion, the happiness, the sadness, the frustration uh, that, that lie within Frida's storyline, I had experienced that, you know. But I've grown so much from that woman. But as a grown-up, I'm able to reflect and still, you know, be in tune with what that was and where I was at that point in my life. So... Tell me about the music and the project that you have. Mm -hmm. Like, how much of your life did you put inside of your music? I put all of my life in my music. I, I've like, I, I think I, I don't really fabricate things. You know what I'm saying? I think you know, for the sake of music and entertainment, mm -hmm. you know, there is some particular dramatics that we may put in music uh, that that we reveal on TV, but. And my music, I just put out a project uh, called Round One. I released that on my mixtapes, and that was just bars. And that was really, I gave the fans that because they fell in love with what they seen Frida do on TV. And those records that I created for Empire, a lot of those were created six, seven years ago when I was at that point in my life. So now, um, with the mixtape, I just gave them my story, my life. You know what I mean? Whether it's you know, love life or personal relationships or just my frustrations with trying to get to that next level or, you know, whatever it was, like anything I dealt with, that's what that's what I talk about. You know what I mean? Now going back to bars, there's been a lot of talk about female MCs and being able to actually handle themselves in a rap battle. Mm -hmm. How do you reason handle yourself in a rap battle? Um, I'm not really a battle rapper. If you wanna go there, we could go there, but it's not really like it's not my top pick. It doesn't do nothing for me. Like, I love to watch it. I think it's entertaining, but it doesn't do anything for me. You know what I mean? But um, I've done it, you know, high school, stuff like that. But I also come from a place where you got to be mindful of your surroundings. So I was never trying to jump in nobody battle because if I eat this nigga up, then it gets personal. I got it. I got and now it. I got to tell my brother. Oh. Okay. And then he got his squad. And then now y'all just, now y'all about to get, 
you know, handled about a few words, like, you know, so I kind of just, you know, and where I'm from, that's just how it went down. I don't know about anywhere else, but I just, I kind of stayed away from that. What do you think about the female rap battle right now that's been going on between Nicki Minaj and Remy Long? Um, I mean, rap is a competitive sport. Yeah. You know, uh, I hate that, you know, there was, there's so many personal things being thrown out there that, you know, are bothering, that have bothered the both of them, but it's rap. It's rap. I love Nicki, I love Remy. Like, get it. And I think that regardless of anything, it's it's done wonders for the both of them. It increased Nicki's album sales, it increased Remy's. So, good promotion. Like, great move. Do it again. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's all good. I ain't tripping. Like, I, don't, I think people are making it more of a big deal, but it's a sport. The same way people are going to sit and talk about Kobe and LeBron or they're going to talk about, you know, Allen Iverson and, and, and Dwayne Wade or whoever, like, it's a competitive sport. So, with all the, the commentary about us, it's the game. This is the game. Remy and Nikki's at the game. They're at the game. And we in the bleachers. Like, no, Nikki, you ain't supposed to take the shot. You ain't taking the no, shot. You know what I mean? It's a game. So, that's how I'm looking at it. Rap is a sport. You know, especially in our culture. You play basketball, you play football, the girls cheerlead, they run track, you rap or you sing. What you doing? You know what I'm saying? So it's a sport. I love it though. Tell me, what's the process like when you go in the studio and you know, you laying down the track? Um, when I go in the studio, I love to be by myself. I don't like an entourage. I don't like any distractions. I'm easily distracted. So I'm also like very self-disciplined. So I know what works and what doesn't work for me. So when I go to the studio, I like to be by myself. I usually have something to drink. I'm like, maybe, maybe you know, some Jack Daniels honey is my favorite. Um, I like the lights low. I just be chilling. I'll just vibe to the beat. Uh, one of my pro producers, uh, Dave Digital, he play a beat, he pull it up. Whatever the beat say to me, I just start mumbling. I just start humming. I create melody or whatever. Um, and most of the time, my record is probably about 95% done without no lyrics. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just all melody and sound. And then I go back and I fill in the blanks. You know what I mean? Yeah. First thing you say to yourself when you wake up in the morning. You know, I thank God for waking me up. Let's get it. Let's get it because every day we got the, a fresh opportunity to try again, try again, try again. So every day I just try. Like I said, I'm very big on self-discipline. So I force myself through things. So get up, do it. What's the thing you want to leave with a lasting impression of your fans in Austin, Texas, the new ones and the old ones? Like when they say, man, I saw Breezy, this is what you want to remember. Um, I want them to leave me knowing that it's possible. It's possible because I, I don't, one thing I don't do is I don't, I'm not telling no false stories or I understand you know that I happen to be a celebrated person. I understand that people get starstruck, people get all that, but I'm not here to sell you that. I'm not trying to sell you that. I just want you to be great. And I want to tell you what you need to do because there's certain things that you can't control. You could be the next Beyonce, but we cannot make nobody sign you. But what I can do is help you prepare for when they do. And make sure you good. Yeah. Because you got to be good. And we see a lot of people in this industry, we see them go crazy. They get on drugs and they, they drink themselves to death or they commit suicide. And we see that. I prepare you to never have to cross those hurdles. Ne we never have to collide with the man in the mirror and we struggling. Yeah. We're not because we know who we are. We know what we're doing. That's it. So really when I meet people, you know, and they got all the questions about, um, you know, Hollywood and da-da-da. It's like, I don't really have them answers for you because that's not it. That's not why I'm here. You know what I'm saying? And it, it might make some people feel like, oh, well, she too serious or she too whatever, but this is real life. This is real life. This is my job. This is what I do. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like if I could help any young woman or young man be better, that's it. That's what it's about because once you good and you got that strength, you can do what you want to do. Yeah. You can build these chairs. You can build this building that's on you. It ain't got to be about Hollywood, it ain't be about whatever, but it's about you just being a decent person and understand that there are certain keys you got to have to elevate yourself. So that's that's what I'm about. So with my fans, when I do get that one-on-one -on -one and I'm able to talk, that's what, and they got them kind of questions, that's what I'm giving. So that's really what I want. I just want people to know that 
that's what I care about because I love people so much. So I really genuinely give a fuck about you. Whether I see you every day or I just met you, whatever, whatever, everybody means the same to me. So that's what I want you to know that she fuck with me. You damn right I do. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if I'm not like weird if I come across your page or whatever and I'm like, see you doing good. Hey, you doing good. You know what I mean? One yeah. of my clients, I used to cut his hair, a young boy named King Roscoe, and he's now on Jermaine Dupri's little show. Wow. And I was cutting Roscoe's hair when he was a little boy. And I just came across this page, of course, I was a barber, I was working, his mom paid me every week to get his cut, I used to give him my old sneakers, whatever. But I, I came across this page the other day, I'm like, damn, you want TV, bro? Like, do your thing, like, I'm proud of you, you know what I'm saying? I'm not scared to say that. I'm not afraid to show love. Some people are, I'm not afraid of that. So anything I got, I'm gonna give it, because I can't take it with me. That's incredible, man. You ask every you ask every question, you know that, right? Without me having to ask you. Because I was gonna say, what's something inspiring? The one your fans have told you. You just told me an inspiring story already, you know. Yeah, that, right? I mean, that's just who I am though. So I, I, you know, if you weren't a rapper and you weren't an actress, you'd probably probably be a professor or a teacher or a counselor or something. Yeah, like I've that. heard that. I've yeah. heard that. Somebody else told me a preacher. Yeah, some, a preacher too. Yeah, exactly. I've heard that. But you know, if, if if this is the way, if this is the way that I gotta get it out, then this is the way it's gonna go. And I'm not here to sell you no dream. I just want to help you find a way. That's it. I, I walked away completely different from this interview now. Yeah, I know. I know. I learned a lot of people. I mean, because the perception is almost one of the worst realities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. People think they know and they, 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 they look at you a certain way. But that ain't me, man. That's not me. And that's beautiful. Y'all heard it first, man. <laughs> Make sure y'all follow this Heard it here first. Heard it first. Shout out DJ Khaled. Babe, Hip Hop Weekly. Y'all stay tuned. Shout out Hip Hop Weekly, man. South by Southwest 2017. We at.